Hi, I'm Kirsten Chick, author of Nutrition Brought to Life, and this podcast is a companion to the book. You can listen as you read Nutrition Brought to Life, or before as a kind of preview, or after you've finished the book as a refresher. Either way, I hope this helps you make some small changes that make a big difference in your life. Welcome to Chapter 5, Sugar Part 2, Life is Sweet. I'm Kirsten Chick and I find I don't crave so much sugar when life really is sweet. When life is miserable or stressful, that's when I want more sweetness in my food. So in this chapter stroke episode, I'm going to look at comfort eating, why we can get so hooked on sugar, and what we can do about that. Ever wondered why so much sugar is added to processed foods? Even the savoury ones like pasta sauces and ready meals? Well, if you get the sugar levels right, it sets off a chain of dopamine and endorphin reactions in your brain similar to when you take drugs, have sex or do anything addictive. You feel great but then quickly get a crash that leaves your brain wanting more. It's the same with salt and fat which is why crisps can be so moorish. That's what makes us overeat, crave certain kinds of snacks and pick at things even when we're not hungry. All sorts of other things can mess with your blood sugar levels, such as how much oxygen you can get to your cells, how well your liver is able to balance glucose, and what nutrients are available to support these processes. And if the energy-making factories in your cells aren't working very well, those cells are going to be crying out for a lot more sugar than usual. In addition, your gut microbes can increase or reduce how much sugar you crave. But that's jumping ahead to future chapters. With all of this going on, willpower alone isn't going to reduce your sugar intake. You're going to need to address some of the underlying biochemistry in your body. We've already started looking at this, so if you're not listening to this in order, then I'd recommend you also go back and listen to chapters three and four. Various emotional states can add even more potency to this, and that's when we can end up comfort eating or binge eating. It's important to address the emotional reasons for this, but it can also be incredibly helpful to balance your blood sugar. The first thing to remember is that sugar is not the enemy. It's perfectly fine to include some sugar in your diet. It's how you eat it that makes a difference. So let's look at some simple ways to address all of this. One great tip for balancing blood sugar is to make sure you have a decent amount of protein in your breakfast and you eat as early in the day as you can. If you're fasting overnight, say for 13 hours or so, then have an early dinner instead of skipping breakfast. Standard breakfast cereals are more likely to upset your blood sugar balance than keep it stable. But a nutty muesli or perhaps something egg-based should do it. Experiment and see what keeps you feeling satisfied until lunchtime. Sometimes snacking really is just a habit. And you can break it by doing something else instead, like a quick walk around the block or turn on the radio and dance around your kitchen for five minutes or some knitting, whatever does it for you. Often, and you may have already heard this, you're actually just thirsty when you think you want a snack. So try a glass of water. Another useful strategy is to keep healthy snacks in the fridge like homemade energy balls and make them as intensely flavoured as possible. Think ginger, chilli and dark chocolate. This overwhelms your brain and stops it wanting more. 
I have some great recipes for these in the book, which have a lot less sugar and fruit in than the ones you buy and are really easy to make. If you're buying snacks, then always check the labels. Look out for sugar, glucose syrup, fructose, and also rice syrup, date syrup, agave syrup, and fruit concentrate. Just because it's not cane sugar, it doesn't mean it's healthy. If they are there, you want them to be low down on the list of ingredients. If you're after a healthy sugar alternative for making your own cakes, biscuits, and desserts, I'd suggest unrefined maple syrup, unpasteurized honey, or even unrefined cane sugar. These have the same amount of sugar, but more nutrients to help you deal with it. In fact, raw honey has some amazing nutrients and may even help improve blood sugar control and insulin sensitivity. Blackstrap molasses is brilliant for flapjacks. It's actually the byproduct of white sugar production. So it's all the goodness they've taken out and still contains some sugary sweetness. Whatever you opt for, reduce the amount you use. Some recipes really only need half of what they suggest. As for artificial sweeteners, xylitol and erythritol are probably the best for most people in that they can actually help rebalance the gut microbiome. But some people are intolerant to these. Sorbitol, saccharin and aspartame are more commonly used, but I would avoid all of these where possible. But my absolute best tip for whenever you find yourself comfort snacking, binging or overeating is to slow down. Give yourself permission to eat without judgment and then savour every exquisite mouthful of what you're eating. What we usually need most at this time is actually to feel centred, grounded and accepted. The next chapter is all about mindful eating, so stay tuned to find out more. There are some great recipes in Nutrition Brought to Life to help you with all of this, including the incredibly popular and delicious spiced fig and apple flapjack recipe on page 284. If you have any useful recipes or tips, please share them on the Nutrition Brought to Life Facebook community group so we can all have a go. Thanks for listening to the Nutrition Brought to Life podcast. There's also a Facebook group you can join called Nutrition Brought to Life podcast community, where you can share useful insights and recipes, ask questions and get more support on your nutrition journey. If you haven't read it yet, there's so much more in the book, Nutrition Brought to Life, as well as all the scientific references and some glorious pictures. And you can find out more about me at kirstenchick.com.